cuff, 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 crow. So, uh, Brian, thank you very much for chatting to us today about your art and why you started. So, um, you tell me a wonderful story about this picture you've got in your hand at the moment. Uh, anyone watching this about at home, you know, f talking about inspirational reasons why people start a, a, a painting or, you know, something like that. What, why, did you, why did you specifically paint this picture? Oh, well, it does actually go back a long, long time. Again, I was, I was in school, Green Lane School, in um, Lister Drive, rather. Um, and in those days, the abattoir was open at the other end of Green Lane. And the cattle trucks used to go past all the time. And in our dinner hour, we'd go, we, me and my mates in school, we'd go down by the railway line, not on the railway line, but just to see these cattle go on, it was just heartbreaking because you could see them looking at you, you know, and some of them were like so distraught that you could hear them kicking the sides out of um, the cattle trucks, you know, like in desperation to try and get out. And in fact, one, at one time a bull did get out and it ran up and down um, Tubrook. That was in the 50s, I remember that happening. Um, but Years later, I used to stay, you know, with my friend Carla Lane, absolutely wonderful woman, and she, she always asked me to come and stay with her down, down south in their lovely big mansion. Um, we got on very well, you know. I used to do lots of paintings for, well, not lots, but I did several paintings for her um, to go on auction for herself, for her charity, you know, uh, Animals in Need, mm. Animal Line. Um, and I used to say, you know, whatever you get, you, you keep it for your charity, and she did that. Um, and then I did several, I did, um, I'd seen a cattle truck at the time, because I used to go with Carla sometimes, you know, to protest about animals getting taken yes. across to other countries mm -hmm. and livestock. Uh, and it was one time that I saw this, this cattle truck, um, and I decided to try and capture, you know, oh, wow. the face when, when, when they're looking at you. Because it, it is, it's heartbreaking. And, and is that, did you do several painters to capture that? Or was that, was this the original and you did it straight away? Or yeah, did you do several I did, versions? Yeah, I did this, I did this straight away more or less, yeah. But um, Carla loved it. And she said, Brian, I want one, I want one. So I did a painting exactly the same as that in mm. acrylics and I said, to give it to Carla and I said, that's for you. When you say acrylics, anyone watching at home, what does that acrylics, mean? Acrylics, well, it, <clears throat> you can work with watercolour, yep. which is the paint water-based, and then you can work with acrylic, which is also water-based, but it dries with a, you, you can use acrylics thinly, or you can use it out the tube, so mm. it looks like the consistency of oil paint. Ah, okay. You can use it thick if you want to. You can make it very thick. With watercolour, you can't do that. So with watercolour, you make it very thin coats mm. and you keep layering it and layering it and layering it and then you build it up. You can do the same with acrylic. You can paint it thin and you can build it up and build it up and build it up. Um, so that you're looking into it. It's like, it's, it's like you're looking at a Rolls Royce car. Yeah, okay, I'm if with you, you now. If you look at a Rolls Royce car, um, and you stand to look at the paintwork, you can actually see into the paintwork. Yeah. That's because I used to do car spraying, because it's very thin layers, and the first layer you put on, you, you rub it down, and then you put another layer on, and you rub it down on a car, Yeah. on, on a canvas. And, and it gradually build up this same. So let me get this right, if anyone's watching at home. There's three main styles. There's water painting, acrylics, and then oils. There's oils, yeah. So the, the, that's the three standard uh, methods of that's, painting. Yeah, that's usually. I've I got another pa a mate who lives up north, Callum Moncrief. He lives in, the, in, lives in Sky. He was one of my lecturers in, 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 in university. Um, and he paints with diesel oil. He paints with anything at all. He's just amazing. But the way he does it, he does it so fast. I, I haven't got that ability at the moment. I'd, l I'd love to paint like he does because 
it takes on a whole new meaning the way it does it. So, so for an art, yeah, it's but it's fantastic stuff. So, for an artist, Brian, do you say that the best paintings that people probably paint does need to have an asp an, an inspirational thing behind it, or can someone just paint something for painting's well, sake? Yeah, I, I, I do that. I do that. I, I've got that much stuff in my head, right? It's, it's, uh, if you imagine sitting in front of a, a television, in front of a cinema screen, and it's a big cinema drug screen, imagine that screen going across with ideas. That's what my brain's like. Okay. It's constantly, I've got things in my head all the time. I could sit down now and just start drawing stuff that's in my head. Close mm. my eyes and visualise, that's what I do. Okay, so another question for you, for anyone watching at home who's, who thinks about painting, how long does it take you to paint something like that picture there? Is it days, well, is it it's weeks? It's very hard, people have asked me that so many times. I mean, all, all the paintings that you see around me, I can't remember. So how long did it take you, do you think, to, to paint that picture? I probably, over about two weeks. And is that Just, solid? Is that solid painting every day? No, no, that's sort of a layer on. If you look, if you look at the painting, you can see it's got like different layers in it. Um, no, sometimes I'll paint and I'll say that's enough, and I'll walk away, and I'll come and look at it the next day, and I'll go, I need to do that, and then I'll, I'll do something else on it. So if some paintings, they can happen very quick, and other paintings will take weeks like that painting over there you know but, but um in terms of uh, you painting if people are interested in your artwork uh maybe wanting you to do some commission work uh are you available to do kind of like paintings for people yeah, and so I forth mean, I, I do it as a hobby don't i yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it's it's a thing what to do that, that's what i do <laughs> um i'm not a big i, I don't know i i just an artist and I never considered myself as an artist ever um, but you know uh, I got myself eventually I thought because people were coming up and saying knock on my door and say are you the artist and I'd go no and they go oh I was told you're an artist and I go no I paint but you know I'm not an artist <laughs> and that was my response because I didn't feel like an artist who am I to say I'm an artist I've got no qualifications. How dare I say I'm an artist? So I never ever said it. And then I thought, you are an artist. I need right? to yeah. go and get some qualifications to prove that I'm an artist to myself. So I went to a college on Shield Road. And what college was that? Classes, a school, sorry, and they, they had art classes. What college was that? You know, it was a school. What school? At the very far end of Shield Road. What was the name of the college? No, it was a school. What was the name of the school? I can't remember. It's at the very end on the right. It's still there. The but you there. actually went to to my college where I work at. Yeah, I graduated from there. What college did you graduate from? Um, Liverpool. It was called the Liverpool. The, it was called the Liverpool Community College of Art and Design. Oh, which is now City Liverpool College. That's right. Oh wow! And, and they abbreviated it, and because they couldn't get the funding at the time, they had to say it was a community college. And my tutor was Pam Bam, um, and she was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I remember saying to Pam, you will take over this one day. And she goes, oh, don't think so, Brian. And she did. Eventually, she did. And I spotted her coming across um, Clayton Square one day, carrying two bags. And I was coming down the steps, and I saw her, and I went, that's Pam. So I, I went straight over to her, and I said, give her a big hug. She dropped the two bags on the floor, give her a big hug. And I said, whispered in her ear, I told you, didn't I? You take over. And she went, oh, you did, Brian, you did, you were right. And I said, I knew it. And, and she did. You know, and she, oh, she was fabulous. She gave me my first chance because she looked at all my work and she just said, definitely you're in. Uh, so without Pam, you know, I wouldn't have produced the stuff that I produced. So, you know, she's superb. And Linda, another lady was Linda. Um, she did. Um, Salvador Dali, then that she was my lecturer for that. She's wonderful. You know, I love being in a college. Had a great time. Um, the only way I could go was by taking my daughter. Um, it was only seven at the time. I said I can only come to college if I can take my daughter. 
and they said it's not a problem. So they allowed you to take your daughter I into class. I take my daughter into college every day. Oh, wow. allowed me to do that. That's an amazing story. Absolutely. And, uh, Listen, Brian. You know it's been wonderful you welcome us, welcome uh, you know like colours into your to your home, talking about your pictures and so forth. If there was a poignant message you wanted to send to any artists and people uh, watching this, you know, thinking about taking up art, what would you say, you know, to someone watching this and they want to take up uh, art? If you, if, uh, to me, if you don't see something that you want to paint, like my my little saying which I've come up with myself, um, for, my, for me personally, I close my eyes and I visualise what I want to see. And I can do that, and if, if I just sit there quietly on the couch, close my eyes, and then just let things come in. And then I, I've got that many characters, um, because I do children's stories, uh, I've not had any published, but I've got some ready to go. Um, want to get my head round how to do it and where to send them and stuff. And Brian, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? Hey, no, yeah. um, I'm 174. <laughs> <laughs> I know I look 174. No, uh, 77. No, because it's good that if someone, you know, even that, you know, in the later twilight years, you know, this, this, would you say there's never an age, do you, do you find age a barrier for you no, painting now? No, no. It's never, ever since I was a little boy, people, even when I was a little boy of three or four, when I'd do something wrong or what they think was wrong, they'd, you know, they used to say, and they probably said it to you, and every other child, stop acting stupid, act your age. Right, and they said that all my life. So even when I was 10, grow up, act your age. So there's no definition of age. You just, you are, that's it. Really. I agree with you, Brian. Well, listen, thank you for uh, having us in your home and I wish you all the best with your artwork and so forth. And um, yeah. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> thank you for coming to my home and sharing my artwork. If you can call it that. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. So, Brian, oh, thank you so much for having me in your house and You're telling welcome, us. Bill. <laughs> and tell us a story about your paintings, etc. And yeah, uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Well, I do. I hope I do see you soon, and be my pleasure. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to come and look at my way. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Brian. No one's ever done that. So thank you, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Okay, bye bye. I'll call again soon. Take care. Bye bye. Take care, Bye.